back in the fur shed. This is Trapping Today. I'm Jeremiah Wood. Thank you for listening in. It's great to be here. We are on YouTube and podcast audio today, and we're going to talk about fur prices. So uh, it is the middle of the uh, the fur selling season. We've just got done with the fur harvesters auction day two. We've got most of the results in on uh, what things sold for. So we're going to have a discussion about that. But first, I want to talk about our sponsors. I want to thank them, Cots Brothers Lures, K-A-A-T-Z-B-R-O-S.com. Cots Bros is the trapping supply dealer of choice for the Trapping Today podcast. You can check them out, Kyle and Kellen Cots, K-A-A-T-Z-B-R-O-S.com to get your trapping supplies. On X, use the On X Hunt app to turn your phone into a GPS and use it on the trap line. Use it when you're hunting, fishing, farming, trapping, everything in between. Uh, so many different uh, layers and access to different types of data, uh, all in the palm of your hand or on your tablet or on your desktop. Uh, you go to onxmaps.com, and when you sign up, use the code TRAP. You'll get 20% off uh, of your first purchase. And finally, to the Trapping Today store, trappingtodaystore.com. Just a quick reminder, these shirts uh, are $10 off, huge discount on shirts, and that's a closeout. So when we sell out, they're gone. Sold a lot from uh, the last time I mentioned it on, on the previous podcast episode. So be sure to go to the store and check it out, see what's left, and pick, pick them up because uh, I have no plans to restock those. So get them while they last. Okay. So I have uh, been listening into the fur harvesters auction here this uh, this afternoon, this morning and afternoon. Beaver started this morning. Um, I've got notes from all the sale catalogs and and a bunch of uh, different sale prices. So I'm going to go through some of the numbers and just kind of talk about my impressions on on what the market is doing and uh, where the demand is, what the buyers are looking for, and and what the prices are. I I um, I've always been kind of a realist when it comes to fur prices, and I never try to hype things up or anything. I'm probably a little more negative than I should be at times, just because I want to be realistic. But I was pretty excited about some of these prices. Beaver, Martin, and Fisher were really, really good. So uh, this is this is pretty encouraging. It's kind of what we predicted was going to happen but uh, maybe a little bit better than, than I had even thought. So we'll go into the details. First thing, let's talk about the zoo. So the zoo is the all of the various items that are kind of specialty things. Uh, there aren't a lot of quantity, isn't a big quantity of them. They're furs that uh, are, are only trapped usually in certain parts of the country or they're small items, not a lot of demand. They're not the mainstream. So these miscellaneous species are usually sold either at the very beginning or the very end of the auction. Uh, the zoo was on Friday, the 22nd, and we get some results from the zoo. So let's look at it. It's, it's, uh, it's wolves, wolverines, bear, black bear, grizzly bear, all that stuff, and, and uh, badger, skunk, weasel, squirrel, and possum. And looking at things that looks like most everything sold, other than squirrel and possum, they didn't really sell, but... Every, every other item pretty much sold out 100%. Timberwolf sold 98%. And uh, the averages were actually not quite as good as I would have expected. Black wolves did really good. They got a, about $500 average. But the eastern wolves, um, 142. Those would be primarily your, your Canadian wolves. Um, western, 200 bucks. So that would be like Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. Uh, the Arctic Arctic section of wolves is about $280 average. Moving on to Wolverine. Wolverine averaged uh, 400 bucks, pretty good for them. That's that's pretty much par for the course of Wolverine. Black bear $142. Grizzly bear, uh, pretty high prices in the thousand in around $1,470, but most uh, not all of them sold. Uh, now going back into more of a mainstream fur item, so badger. Only 225 badgers were offered at this auction, and badger have been uh, kind of a victim of the low coyote numbers because coyote prices are so low. Badgers uh, have not been harvested. People just aren't trapping for coyotes, and usually you catch badgers when you're targeting coyotes. Um, only 225 offered, 100% sold. They averaged $35, so really good prices for badgers. They continue to be strong. Skunks. We knew, you know, skunks are a novelty item. 
they have been selling strong the last few years, fifteen to twenty dollar average. They averages they averaged over twenty three dollars in this auction, and Weasel five dollars and twenty seven cents, a hundred percent sold of the eighty six hundred that were offered. So pretty good prices for them as well. Okay, now uh, today in this sale we had. Um, beaver, otter, muskrat, fisher, marten, red fox, and raccoon. There were also some ranch fox in, in there as well, um, and there were gray fox. Didn't pay as much attention to those, but uh, we'll we'll get into the major items, um, particularly um, the uh, the beavers and and the, a lot of the other fur items that that most people that are watching or listening to this are going to be targeting, and. Uh, the only thing uh, we have left to do tomorrow is get some coyotes, mink, uh, wild mink, ranch mink, and uh, let's look at the catalog here, and uh, bobcat and lynx. So those are coming tomorrow. I may do a supplementary episode to kind of talk about those. Um, I, I don't know if I'll, I might throw something up on YouTube uh, pretty pretty quick and simple when, when those results come out. but. Uh, We'll talk about most of the averages today, and then hopefully next week I'm trying to get Kyle Cotts from Cotts Brothers Lures onto the podcast, and we're going to have uh, kind of a, do a, a breakdown of the fur market now that we have these sale results. And I always love getting Kyle's perspective on things because he has a long history in the market, and and he's really sharp. He has a lot of insider information, and he knows how the market works. So it's always fun to get his his perspective and his thoughts from. Uh, from what after we see the results. But let's start with beaver. So there were 45,000 beaver offered at this auction. Now, in the past, we would sell in North America between 60,000 and 120, 150,000 beavers a year through auction. That has uh, declined considerably over the years. We've had several years of super low fur prices, no beaver market. And uh, for a couple years there, we were only selling about 30,000 beavers, uh, 30, 30, maybe 60. And uh, we're starting to bump that up with, with 45,000 in this auction. I think the last auction, the last two auctions offered 30,000. So we increased the numbers by about 50%. And that was the big question was we knew there was a lot of demand because the Hatter market that's putting a floor on the beaver prices. We've been averaging like $30 for beaver. Whereas a few years ago, we were 10 to $13. So it's been really good as far as average prices. But the question was, we pump a few more beavers into this market. We know it's a fashion trend. Is this going to hold up? Is the market going to be able to support the little bit of increased supply? Um, is it going to fade over time? None of us really know the answer to that. But I can give you a good answer today. It is holding up. The, the demand for beaver continues to be strong, and I was really excited to see these results. So essentially every 100% of the beaver sold, as far as I could tell. I sat in on all of the lots and listened to the auction. There was uh, very uh, intense bidding back and forth. Um, pretty much every lot had two or three buyers, or sometimes four or five buyers or more that were interested in the lots and were bidding against each other, running up the prices. Uh, really good, fast action. This is this is what an auction is about. So in the past several years when the fur market's been really weak, it's been quite frustrating to watch these auctions because they're not really true auctions. When uh, I, I know I've, I've mentioned before where the auctioneers just standing there kind of going through all the, the whole catalog and looking for lots that someone might be interested in and they throw a few prices out nobody bids and they move on and uh, there's been times where entire um, species have so have gone through in five to ten minutes because nobody was interested um, but it just goes back to the fact that in, in my opinion true price discovery happens at the auction level when you have multiple buyers that are bidding on the same item and they all want the same item they're going to bid it up to the maximum price that they're going to be able to make a profit on sometimes they'll bid it even higher but that's where you get true market price you can't get market discovery with just one buyer and one seller so it's fun when you have an auction when there's actually demand and the auction can work the way it's supposed to and we saw that today 
So we'll we'll start out. I think I'm going to go through some of this. And uh, I thought I wrote I wrote down a few notes somewhere, but I don't have them. So um, the these started off with the eastern beaver, which is always the best section of beaver. Um, they're they're typically going to be darker fur. They're usually going to be a thicker thicker section. The very large 3x to 2x select heavy extra dark to dark or heavy brown beaver. Those all sold um, in the range of we got we got a lot here sold for fifty one dollar average fifty four dollars fifty six fifty seven fifty six fifty five and fifty two. Um, moving on to the three x two x select semi heavy the fur was a little less thick on these uh, but still really good pelts forty eight dollars fifty one fifty one. Um, we got into the light and uh, numbers one ones and twos uh, getting a little bit below the selects. They weren't quite as good. Um, we're in the 40, 41, 40, 43, 44, 45, 44 dollar range. We had a few black beavers. Those beavers are like 3x, 2x black. They're really dark. They're usually a specialty item. This would be the, I think this is about the top of the sale. They average $80 for, for that lot. And then we're moving on more 3x to 2x beavers. Again, these are blanket beavers. These are really big beavers. Uh, $46, 46, 47, 46, um, 43, 42, getting into some damage. Getting uh, eastern beavers, 3x, 2x, slight damage, semi-heavy. This is where you're typically going to see some drop, a pretty considerable drop in the price. But these held up really nice. $45 for this super long string. Of these beavers, um, 50 to a lot, and there was probably 15 or 20 lots there, all sold for $45. More of them here sold for $42, uh, even more sold for $42. Then we're into um, just long, long strings of these very similar beavers, uh, getting down into we're into the 1x, so extra large beavers, a lot less surface area, less square inches on these beaver pelts, but heavy pelts, uh, selects. They were 44, 45, 46, 44. Let me turn the page here. Um, super long string of these sold for 46. Uh, we got into 1X Select Semi Heavy, um, sold for 41. I'm not gonna go through the description on exactly what all these grades mean. If you go back, I did a podcast a couple years ago with um, one of the guys at Fur Harvesters Auctions and he explained uh, all of the uh, different grades and what they mean and how they uh, grade these beavers and all the different fur bears into different lots um, and, and it, it you you can listen into that and get a better understanding of, uh, of of how these are all put together and what it means um, Eastern beaver 1x select semi browns 39 39 get into the lights ones and twos were 29 um, Going into 1X Red Rim, Extra Dark Brown, 37, 38 um, of these Eastern Beavers. I had some in this lot, in one of these lots that sold for $38. Basically, I can tell you these are extra large beavers that, you know, dark, pretty dark brown uh, pelts. They come from, um, mine came from northern Maine. We tend to have a darker beaver in general than the rest of the country. Uh, they, they were... They, they were not spectacular pelts. They weren't they weren't flat. And they weren't maybe super, super prime. And uh, the red rim, I think that has to do with stains on the edges of the pelt. It's on kind of where the belly of the beaver is. And they, they're just a little bit off color. Um, but I got $38 for those. So that was pretty awesome. Um, and we had uh, moving down in the one X's. Again, when you get beyond the extra darks, we're getting into the slight damage, heavy, super, still into the dark, we're getting into some damage pelts. Again, because of this Hatter market so strong, we're still at 38, 37, 36 dollars, 36, 37, 38. Um, these prices I'm quoting are for lots of 60 beaver and some of them are long strings a lot. So people are buying hundreds and hundreds of beaver at these prices. Getting down to 1x, uh, slight damage, semi-heavy. So these would be beaver that maybe you caught a little bit earlier in the season, so the pelt isn't quite as thick. I had some in this lot as well that averaged $37.
Moving on further into uh, slight damaged 1X, they, uh, these are a little bit lower quality, but they held up $34 to $36 on all of these lots. Um, I think that's enough for the, the Easterns. We'll, let's check out a couple of the smaller sizes just so you can get an idea of that. Let's get into the larges. The larges were still holding up at 32, 28, 31, 33, 32. Um, some black larges for 42, uh, 31, 33, 36, uh, 32. So, so the large beavers, that's 30 to $35. A bunch at 34 here. 30 to $35 for a large beaver, large Eastern beaver is pretty awesome in, in my opinion. Um, more Easterns. We get into the large mediums. Large mediums, 31 to $35 most of the lots. Uh, we got a little bit further down the large mediums. Those were the higher quality lots. Large mediums that were kind of semi-heavy, a little bit less fur on them. We're down 22, 20, 24, um, 26, 25, 25, 25, 25. Still holding up nicely. And beyond that, we get the mediums. The medium beavers were uh, 25, 18, 21. Um, well, that 24. Five was large medium sorry so the mediums 18 21 19 18 15 16 17 17 uh, smalls 12 14 50 uh, 13 small slight damaged 10 10 50 and that was it for we had some I had I had one in this lot extra small this is something that's almost not even worth throwing into the auction. They average $7. So, I mean, this is this is pretty good. So, um, going into the Western beavers. Now, for folks who don't know, Western beavers are typically going to be a much lower quality beaver for most of what the market wants. They are pale in color. They're not dark at all. So, they're because they're super light, they're not in as high a demand in certain fashion uses like uh, coats and and hats and mitts and stuff like that. People just like tend to like those darker beavers. They seem to look more attractive. Uh, so so they always get a, a lower price. But again, because of the this hatter market that just wants the felt, these larger sized Western beaver are in are continue to be in really really good demand. So looking at three x to two x those those uh, blanket. Western beavers, we got averages of $48, $36, $48, $50, $49, $45, $44, $50, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55, $55,
for these uh, beaver from the Hatter market, and there's also uh, a demand for other uses that's continuing to be bid up for those higher quality beavers. Now let's move on to otter. In my predictions getting into the first season this year, I was a little bit nervous about otter. I was concerned that the increased harvest of beaver because of the higher beaver prices was going to put more otter into the market because otters are typically caught incidental to beavers. And if the demand wasn't very high, that would result in much lower otter prices. I was concerned about it. Um, the guys at Grunwald were talking about it maybe being a weakness. Other people were concerned about it. Apparently, we had nothing to be concerned about, at least based on this auction. Because, uh, and I mean, going back to beaver, fur harvesters, got to hand it to them. They put together the best collection of beaver in the world. And uh, they always get really good prices for their beavers. Uh, the rest of the furs can come and go. It just depends on what the market is doing. But um, the, the, they, uh, this collection of otter did extremely well. There were a lot of interesting patterns that I tried to keep track of. The otter are, are really a whole lot to digest because they, they are lotted into so many different grades and lots that um, a lot of them are sold and like the strings are not very long. A lot of the lots are just single, single lot strings. And I mean, the auctioneer just wearing himself out on these otters, especially because uh, they were bid up. They were bid up so much. Um, there were a few early on in the auction. There were a couple of lots. Actually, I'm looking at two right now that didn't sell. One of the things to keep in mind is that fur harvesters said at the very beginning, uh, before this auction even uh, started, weeks ago, they said, listen, if we don't sell something at this auction, we're not going to do private treaty after the auction. You're not going to be able to walk into a room and buy it at, at lower prices because it doesn't sell at the auction. Uh, I think buyers have been able to take advantage of that in really low fur markets the last few years, and uh, it's really hurt us as trappers. Because, you know, it it's kind of gets away from the competitive uh, auction market. And so they said, you know what? If you don't bid this auction, you're not going to get them. You're going to have to go somewhere else to find your your uh, pelts. Because we're just going to put them back in the, in the May auction. And then you'll be able to bid for them there. And maybe after May, they'll do some private treaty and try to clean things out for the summer. But um, I think that helped get buyers realizing that, hey, you got to bid up the otter. A few of the observations I had, um, otter don't necessarily vary a lot in uh, price and demand from north to south uh, in terms of like how prime the fur is. It just doesn't, it's a very uniform type of fur. One thing that does matter, what can matter on otter is the size, of course, and then the color of the fur can matter a lot. And your southern otter tend to be a lot lighter colored. They're very pale. And because of that, um, a lot of times the southern otter can sell better than the northern otter, even though the fur isn't as thick, because the the market wants a pale colored otter. And one of the things that just kept blowing my mind was how much the market was willing to pay up for pale otters in this auction today, March 2024. Then then they they cared more about the color and more about getting those pale otters than they did about any of the damage. And there were singed, heavy singed otters. As long as they were pale, they were bitter right up to the top. It, it was pretty amazing. And uh, it was quite a few different bitters. To, you know, it wasn't just one person buying all these otters from what I could tell. So starting out with the northern otter, the uh, huge 4X, 3X select. This would be uh, the top lot. This sold for $84. Um, the uh, Moving on to 2X, 1X select, semi-heavy, extra dark, dark. These were 74 uh, 2X, 1X, uh, heavy and semi, dark brown were 52. Um, we had lots here for 50. There was one no sale, um, $44, $46, 46, 52, a no sale, 37, 49, 46, 42, 36. The, uh, these include um, a singed brown to light brown otter 
you know, more of a, a lighter color, sold for $49. The same type of otter that was darker brown sold for $37 for $12 less. Um, badly singed otter brown to light brown, $46, only $3 less than the singed. Um, and dark brown with no damage sold for $42. It, 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 and it continued. I mean, it was pretty amazing. The uh, the large select heavy semi heavy dark otters were thirty one thirty two dollars. The uh, brown to light brown were forty one of the same class. Uh, looking at some darker singed otters twenty twenty five dollars, uh, twenty six twenty seven twenty seven thirty one thirty. Then we got into the brown light brown, uh, large semi heavy semi heavy thirty nine. Uh, dark brown, same grade, same grade, but singed, uh, 24, but the singed dark, uh, so heavy, semi-heavy, dark, light brown, $30, um, dark brown, 30, dark brown, 30, 25, 26, 27, 26, 25, 24, 25, 22. These are all pretty dark otters going into the large, medium size. 23, 23, 21, um, 21, 21, we're getting in some singed, large, medium, 20, 22, 22, uh, 14, 17, 12, 6 was a medium, light, dark brown, so it's light fur, uh, dark color, and medium size, that was only 6 bucks, uh, and then another heavy, semi-heavy, dark brown for eleven fifty. The next section of otter, we're looking at 2X, so pretty large otter select. These are northern central otter, um, pretty dark ones starting out 45, 38, 45, 37, 39, 35, 39, 45. A uh, little bit lighter color, 53, 50, a little back to dark, 42, 34, um, 45 getting lighter to 52, then back dark 32, um, light brown 50, dark brown 45, brown 46, extra dark 34, extra dark 25, dark 37, 30, 42, light brown 48, 48, dark 40, dark uh, 36, 31, extra dark 38. So yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm uh, distinguishing here the dark versus light, but there's all kinds of other uh, distinguishing factors in the grades and the damage and all that but it, it was pretty interesting um, there was one buyer there that seemed to be picking up a lot of otters it looks like I made a um, I made a note of that and one of the things uh, that I made note of was you know where they would start the bidding on a lot of these and where they would go so typically fur harvesters starts out the bidding at what they think the item is valued at or should be valued at and then it bids in a good auction, it'll bid up, you know, quite a bit beyond that. A lot of times they'll start the bidding out and no one will even bid in, in you know, the auctions we've seen in the past. But I made a couple notes, like there's one lot here, uh, these brown otters, so again, they're, they're relatively pale. Uh, they were slightly singed, large otters, slight damaged. They started out at 12 bucks, so fur harvesters valued that lot at $12. A piece and they were bid up to 29 that, that that's a lot of demand in the market uh, there are a couple more lots that started at 12 and they were bid up to 1650 or 1750 um, there was yeah there pretty much everything was sold I, I don't see any other no sales here further down uh, down in the catalog um, yep there was a no sale at 22 here um, some of these light brown otter that were singed in, uh, in the lower graded sections here, we're looking at, we got averages. I'm going to run through a bunch. So these are all in the singed uh, lots. They were either singed, slightly singed, or badly singed. And so these are typically going to sell at lower prices. Here's some averages for you. 28, 58, 50, 42, 38, 48, 60, 37, 37, 26, and 49. Um, 58, 47, 20, 47, 24, 30. I mean, that's just, 
I'll go through all the rest of the, of the singed ones, 30, 20, 25, 20, 20, 43, 30, 43, 42, 15. Uh, had some even toward the end that the valuation was at five and they were bid up to more than double of that. So uh, the otter sale was good, guys. It was, I mean, the otter market for, I'm, I'm not sure. I'd, I'd love to hear from Kyle and maybe see if he has thoughts or someone else has thoughts on what exactly is driving the demand for this otter market. But uh, there were like, 6,500 or there are 5,000. So there are 5,000 otters sold that in, and uh, there was plenty of demand to, to satisfy uh, the, to, to just provide for some good prices for those 5,000 otter. Now get you all excited and happy about beaver and otter. Let's look at muskrat. This was not good. So this was not an auction. And uh, this is where I think people have the potential to get a little bit confused and have a hard time following along with Fur Harvester's auction. Uh, I know when I started listening in, there was a lot of bidding and a lot of auction action that went on just like the muskrats did today. And I couldn't figure out what, what, what the deal was. There were a bunch of numbers being thrown out and... Uh, a lot of shuffling around from lot to lot and moving through the catalog like super super fast and it took me a while to figure out what was happening but basically what it is is there's just no demand for the product at the prices the fur harvesters is set as a, a minimum valuation and so they started out and in my opinion I feel these muskrats have been been in quite a few sales. A lot of them, I think, are probably starting to get a little stale. They got to sell at some point, but they didn't move at the last auction. And they didn't really move at the auction before that. So the, we all know the muskrat price has dropped considerably. Um, we've been talking, I, I've been talking about a 2 to $3 average, maybe. And, uh, and that's if you're lucky. A lot of places and types of rats you probably average less than two or two or 250 um, but for some reason for harvesters has these 300,000 muskrats and they really think they're worth more than that and they want to sell them for more than that and they're just not moving and the fur market is so driven by demand I've come to realize that uh, demand is is far more important than supply in my opinion and as a result, when there is little to no demand, you are not going to catch a bid on most of these items. The only bids you're going to get is people that are speculating, trying to get stuff really cheap to maybe try to flip later on. So when they started out, the Eastern Winter Rats 3X, 2X Select Heavy, beautiful rats. They valued them at $7 and no one touched them. No sale. Uh, moving on, more lots, no sale. $6.50, no sale. $4.80, no sale. Um, they sold out of the eastern um, fall rats 3x and 2x they sold two lots two very small two lots of these yeah they actually were small um, apparently the buyer the most of the lots were a thousand rats per lot and there were two lots in this entire string that had less than a thousand one had 176 one had 337 one buyer bid uh, the five dollar minimum on those two lots and got them for five dollar averages and every other lot in the string that had a thousand rats didn't even catch a bid. So someone probably had a you know limited budget. They wanted to pick up a few rats for a project and they didn't need much. That's that's a telltale sign of limited demand. Uh, the rat sale probably lasted all 10 minutes, uh, maybe even less than that. There was no sales at uh, $2.80 for some of the lower quality rats. Um, there was a string that sold at two dollars and fifty cents i had some rats in this uh some of my main rats they were graded as fall 1x to large uh, number twos and uh, they sold there was probably eight or ten thousand of them that sold for two dollars and fifty cent averages and uh, another string i had the next two the next two strings of lots um, I had rats in there from Maine, and they didn't even catch a bid. Um, I had rats in the whole next page. I just, I look at, I star the places where my my animal, my furs are in the sale, just so I can get an idea of what Maine furs are, are going to be going for. 
and uh, there was a long string that I had several rats in that sold for um, two dollar average. They were Eastern. Um, let's see, they were Eastern fall rats, uh, medium ones and twos. Uh, some of them sold, most sold for two dollar averages. Some sold for a dollar forty. And then toward the end, there was uh, a string for two seventy to two eighty, a uh, string for two twenty. 240 and then the uh, badly damaged rats some sold for 30 cents some for 40 cents they were just cleaning house there just trying to get rid of them and uh, a lot of times people think well that's highway robbery you know 30 40 cents well the fact is uh, from the buyer standpoint they're gonna have to pay a handling fee on each of those items they're gonna have to pay to have them packaged up and shipped to them they're gonna have to pay the buyers commission and so after, it's not going to be 30 cents. It's going to be um, at least three, four times that amount for, for those cheap rats for, from uh, what the buyer has to actually write a check for. Okay, so we went down. Let's get back up a little bit. Now, I know a lot of you guys are, are in places in the country where you're not going to be trapping a lot of Fisher and Martin. Uh, and I feel bad for you because we are very, very fortunate right now to have a hot market for Fisher and Martin. The, uh, the Fisher sale, and well, both sales were extremely exciting. They were rapid. There was lots of buyers, lots of back and forth, bang, 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 you know, people. And uh, it just plenty of action. And uh, when one buyer dropped out, there was one or two more jumping in to, to bid behind them. And it, it was great. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to listen into, to watch. And uh, we got some super good prices. So just to kind of a, a really quick overview um, I what I did for my personal fishers so for folks that are in Maine you're gonna have fishers that are gonna be very similar to mine uh, mine were probably fairly prime I started trapping a little bit later in the season than a lot of people so they were the furs were nice and prime um, however what I did was my best dark male fishers I sent up to Bill Wyvoda in Alaska at um, Arctic Raw Fur Company and uh, he's bought my fishers, my my dark fishers for two years in a row. He has a market for them um, for sewing and for people that make hats and and uh, stuff with fisher pelts. So there's a, a big demand there because Alaska has people who like to sew with fisher pelts, but they don't produce any fisher to speak of in Alaska. So uh, I sent those to Bill. He cut me a check for him, um, good price, $50 average, no commissions, anything. Paid right away. It was great, great. Um, if you have any furs that, that they would be looking for in Alaska, I, I, if you can ship them pretty reasonably, um, great person to do business with. Um, but I had a bunch of um, fishers that were lighter colored that he wasn't interested in. Uh, mostly it was my females. Uh, they were a little bit smaller and lighter in color. So I've sent them to fur harvesters, and I figured I might average uh, thirty-five to forty dollars. Uh, looking at the way the market was looking, I figured I'd do pretty well to get forty um, for for those. And uh, looks like uh, preliminary results, I got fifty-three uh, average for those fishers. The the top fishers were the one X to large. Um, we we don't get as many of those big fishers necessarily in Maine. I think part of it is probably because of the way we have to trap with the boxes, and um, we're not going to get huge, massive fishers. But we you we could still get fishers in that in that uh, grade. But these are some of the best fishers. Um, the one X to large, the number ones thing with Fisher is the colors are all over the map. They have A, B, A, B, C, and D colors on them. And some of them are combined lots with A's and B's, combined with C's and D's, and so forth. So it's hard to really like look at the list and say, okay, this sold better than that. So I'm just going to throw out a bunch of the averages for these Fishers. $60, 62 68 64 64 70 70 68 66 74 66 68 60 56 70 70 64 64 66 68 um, next couple pages we're all 60 to 72 58 to 72 
Um, moving down the line, this is where my fishers mainly graded out. They would would have been in uh, medium, medium to medium or small select, and a bunch of different colors, um, and medium small number ones. 58, 58, 54, 52, 56, 54. They're all in the 50s. Um, between 50 and $60 all the way through these pages and pages of, of Fisher lots. They just, they sold great. And even when we got down toward the end, toward like the junk, the very lowest lot of Fisher sold, it was uh, medium to small, uh, good damaged. They sold for 16 bucks. The uh, 1X to small, number four and damaged, those are just, I think that's just like a throwaway lot. They averaged $20. Um, there were lots, one lot toward the end of, of B and C, extra, extra pale, medium, small, uh, slight damage. They valued them at $32. This is just an example, and they were bid up to 43 So there was just super demand all the way through the auction, and Fishers did very well. And Martin were pretty much the same. Now, uh, of course, Martin, I'm going to open up my window here. It's getting warm in the fur shed. Martin are highly variable depending on where you are. If you're in the lower 48 states, you're going to have a Martin that is going to be smaller in size, uh, less thickness of fur, and it's going to grade uh, lower quality. It's also going to have highly variable color, tend to have more lighter colors, and uh, it's just going to not going to do as well. If you're up in Alaska, or Northwest Canada, you're gonna have a much larger Martin. It's gonna be darker, more consistent, chocolatey type colors, and a thicker, generally thicker fur, depending when you catch it. But you're gonna get a much better price. Those Alaskan and Canadian Martin, they were, I would say, conservatively, uh, average of seventy to a hundred dollars. When you got into uh, the semi heavies, you got more like in the fifty to sixty dollar range for for those larger Martin that were semi heavy, and then you got into the lower forty eight, like the main Martin, the Eastern Canada, and the um, yeah, actually some of the some of the semis, yeah, sixty to seventy for the semis, but the main Eastern Canada, uh, lower forty eight, even like the Western Rocky Mountains. We were in the 30s and 40s. Um, I believe my Martin, my Martin averaged about $47. That is pretty spectacular. I mean, most they were all pretty much larges. I we don't our Martin are so small here. They very few of them grade XL. Most of our Martin are going to grade large. So um, the 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 larges that my couple of lots my Martin were in. They started out at $32 to $34 valuations, and they were bid all the way up to $47, $48. So there was great demand for Martin. That was that was a pretty awesome sale to watch. And even going, you know, go go down deep into the catalog, into the medium and small, they were in the 30s. They were all in the low to mid 30s. All the medium, medium to small Martin. Uh, toward the end, medium, small, and the damage is like the semi-heavies. They were still in the 20s. The the very lowest classes of Martin sold for what our Martin used to average in the lower 48. So that was pretty spectacular. The, uh, the Westerns, the Western Martin, pretty much the same. I think they're the same as the main Martin. They had fewer lots uh, the way they were graded out, but they were pretty well similar in, in average price so again a good sale good martin prices now red fox was uh red fox it just depends on what your perspective was and how red fox did the they they average pretty low but red fox has been low for like 15 years we haven't had super good red fox prices for as long as i can remember so considering that, I thought they did actually did pretty good. They cleared a lot of Red Fox out. The first three pages of the catalog, there were only like three no sales. So the top end of the Red Foxes were, were selling pretty consistently. We got into some of the um, fourth page catalog, some of the Easterns, 
1x to large, number ones and twos, heavies and semi-heavies, they were valued at $25 to $35 and they no sailed. So uh, there wasn't any demand for them. Um, moving further down toward the end of the catalog, there were, you know, probably 50% clearance on the, the back half of the catalog. So, uh, th so there were some foxes that didn't sell. Um, but there was, with fox, it was interesting. There was like really competitive bidding on some of the lots. And then other lots, there'd be absolutely no interest whatsoever. So uh, it, 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 was what it, it was what it was. Um, where you had some competitive bidding, it was pretty good. One thing that I did notice is I, I made a note here that they gave away a lot of low quality fur. So toward the end of the foxes, there was a lot of like, uh, there were several lots at $3.50 that just went. Um, there was $4, $4, $1, 25 cents. Uh, so there, there was several of those lots that they just, they cleared them out. But you know what guys, in my opinion, that's what the auction has to do. If there's no demand for this fur, it can't sit forever. It cannot sit in the auction house for years and years in cold storage. Either someone wants it or they don't. And if we keep sending the furs there, we got to expect that at some point the true market price is going to come out and we're going to we're going to get low prices for some of these furs. So I think that is to be expected. We all should expect it and we need to be okay with it when it happens because it's, it's the reality of the market. Red Fox, not a lot of demand right now. When someone comes up with a fashion trend a few years from now where red fox are in as much demand as, as beaver pelts are for cowboy hats right now, then we're going to be on fire. It's going to be awesome, um, but we're not there yet. Gray fox, uh, pretty much I was shocked at how high the valuations and the, mini, the minimum values were placed on gray fox. I don't know what happened there, but most of the minimum values on the lots were about 22 to 23 dollars and nobody was interested in gray fox at those prices um i didn't even i didn't think they were worth i don't think gray fox are worth even even really 15 on average um if if you were just to ask me out of the blue what they're worth uh, so the ones that did sell there were a few lots that sold for those minimums at 22 23 they were some of the best lots uh, one sold for 16 one for twelve fifty, twelve fifty, thirteen fifty, six fifty, and seven dollars, um, and then the last lot, the damage is at a dollar. So uh, pretty much uh, less than half the gray fox sold in the catalog. So we'll see those at the next auction. And then finally, uh, there were some ranch fox that sold, but I didn't follow them. I'm less interested in those values. Just you know, I'm I'm, I'm more tuned into what we catch as trappers, what we might be interested in. Uh, but the raccoons, there were, oh, I want to say there were 15,000 raccoons offered in this auction. And uh, I did not stick around for all of the raccoon sale because the number of different grades there are in raccoons and the pace that auction was going, I would have sat in front of my computer for a, about an hour and a half listening to raccoons sell. And I feel like I get the gist of it. So again, we know raccoons have been in the tank for a very long time. So my expectations were very low for raccoon prices. Given those low expectations, personally, whether I'm right or wrong about this as a true statement of the market, I thought raccoons sold pretty good. For the first um, you know, couple eight or ten pages of lots that I that I listened into. Uh, these are, of course, the top end of the raccoons, the, the 4X, 5X raccoons, um, you know, so also even some 2X and 3X in there. But uh, the, the, the best sections, the Canadians, the, the northern raccoons, the heavy raccoons, western heavy, you know, they, I felt they did pretty darn good. I mean, the top lot at the very beginning was $29. Those were 5X, 4X, number one Canadian coons. Uh Moving on, different lots beyond there, 23, 21, 20, 18, 12, 50, 10, 50, 24, 18, 20, 21, 15, 50, 11, 50. Then we start to drop down, 9, 9, 8, 16, 50 for some reason. I don't know what that was all about. 6, 4, 9, 50, 7, 5, 
five seven five fifty five four two fifty five fifty three fifty three fifty then we get a string of lots uh, that were the largest so those are like your tiny raccoons uh, they were uh, some of them might have been damaged and stuff they were around a dollar a piece they mostly sold for moving on to our western western heavy raccoons a lot of 24 24 26 25 24 24 16 21 16 16 16 20 um 15, 50, 19, 50, 13, 15, 10, 18, 16. 15. If you've got a really high quality raccoon, those are good prices, guys. That's those are those are good prices. And then we dropped off, and you know the prices did uh, calm down quite a bit, but the lots are moving. They're selling, so there is some demand for raccoon. Uh, I trailed off in the Western North Centrals, 5x, 4x, selects, 24, 24. 21, uh, number ones, 15, 50, 12, uh, slight damage, 16, 50, and then I stopped listening. But um, I, I'm sure that as we got towards the end, there was either no demand or maybe they gave away some of those like main eastern raccoons, uh, 1x or 2x uh, or, or smaller, uh, large medium. You know, yeah, they probably had to give those away or maybe no bid on them. But that's the raccoon market. That's what it's been. Um, we can't expect that to, to just go crazy all of a sudden. Um, I was encouraged. It'll be interesting to see how the averages play out when they give the total report at the end of the sale for raccoon. But so overall recap, I know that was a long uh, chat about fur prices, but <clears throat> in this, the latest auction, we're looking at really good beaver market, surprisingly good otter market, awesome Martin Fisher market. Red Fox is a little weak, uh, but but it's okay. Muskrat, terrible, completely dead. Raccoon, a little weak, but okay, kind of chugging along. Uh, we'll see uh, what the coyotes do tomorrow and a few of the other items. I think coyotes are going to be terrible. Um, don't, don't expect a whole lot from them. I don't think anything has changed to, to increase the demand in the coyote market. But again, it's what it is. We all knew... If you're paying attention, unless you're living under a rock, we kind of expected this. Uh, fur markets chugging along. Uh, I would say, as a take-home point, it is fun to see a live, uh, lively auction with lots of bidding. It was kind of cool. So with that, guys, uh, thanks for everything. Thanks for our sponsors, Cots Bros and Onyx. And uh, be sure to check out the Trapping Today store. Beaver market's hot. Get your Birch River Beaver lure at trappingtodaystore.com. Got plenty of that in stock, and it ships out fast. Uh, free shipping on all orders uh, and pick up your shirts. They're discounted to $15, $10 off on your shirts. All of your Trapping Today shirts, uh, make sure you find something that is that is in your size. And uh, if you can find it in stock, you better get it while it lasts. All right, guys, till next time, keep on talking Trapping. Keep on thinking Trapping. We'll catch you on the next episode. I got to go plow some snow. Uh, we've got like eight inches uh, coming down right now expected. And possibly up to another 18 inches tonight and tomorrow so we may have 24 inches of snow to deal with um yeah gonna go move it around a little bit uh, it felt like spring for a while but winter is back and uh and we're gonna hunker down for a little bit and, and uh, survive it hopefully for another few weeks all right guys take care we'll catch you on the next one